Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about eight good reasons to buy iconic masters. Now, if you can afford a box, probably go out for the box because you are going to hit one of these eight cards. There are eight rares in iconic masters worth more than $20 as of this video. That is exceptional value. That is just unheard of. Now, you do have to pay $10 a pack MSRP. But assuming that you buy a box or you can get some type of a discount, definitely worth the gamble. And Magic players like to gamble. So if you're going to gamble somewhere, I would rather gamble on a set where the card values will hold for a long time and possibly go up than something like, I don't know, Hour of Devastation where you hit a Scarab God or you hit nothing. Like the expected value of Hour of Devastation is I think $68. And surprisingly a lot of that is due to the $42 Scarab God being mythic which again not uh, the odds are never not in your favor so we have the dot C's I think this artwork is the most beautiful one and it will be in demand glimpse which is a $24 card I don't see uh, maybe these prices go down a little bit but due to casual demand on glimpse i don't see it being at 15 for that much i don't see it being at 15 for very long even though i do expect it to hit it so i mean casual players love it mill loves it 10 cards is a lot for two and it has never been i mean it's this is the best mill card and magic you had breaking breaking and entering being a viable kind of okay this is kind of good but nothing kind, nothing comes close to glimpse in terms of milling. So I'm pretty glad I don't actually own a copy of this card. It would be good to get four of them just so I can mess around with a mill deck. It's just fantastic. I mean, maybe you mill yourself, right? You mill yourself and then you have all these mechanics like delve. That's a lot of cards. Uh, that is a lot of cards. Uh, we have Cryptic Command, which had seen a rise in price before before falling again and now it should fall even more cryptic command one of the better blue control cards in the only downside is triple blue and when people are playing death shadow and grixis and all these other colors triple blue is kind of hard to do even in modern one of the strongest cards in control gives you all types of flexibility. I'm very glad to see it reprinted with new artwork that's important here. And its price should, I mean, it's always going to be over a $20 card. I can't imagine it being under just given how powerful it is. Now, the important part to note is on my list of eight cards, I'm not putting any mythics. The mythics are kind of a wash. I mean, yeah, there's some really good ones like Man Drain. Alvison is not bad, but the main value, the main reprinted value and the, the value that will hold are in the rares and master sets have shown that the rares can hold their value. Grove of the Burn Willows, this card used to be close to $80 uh, when Tron was the best deck. I'm glad that it has been reprinted. I'm kind of waiting for Punishing Fire to be unbanned and then the Punishing Fire, which I own many copies of, will spike to from five cents to probably 50 cents, which would be amazing. Oh, oh yeah, anyway, just, they did a fantastic job picking the valuable cards and they did it on purpose. There's no way they just randomly pick cards and they picked all the valuable cards and needed reprints they did it on purpose. They have the one chase card, if you will, uh, the mana drain. But when you look at the quality of reprints, it's very high and it's spread evenly. So Cryptic Command for control players, Grove of the Burn Willows for Tron players, Glimpse for casual players. You have a little bit of something for everybody. That they're trying. And Dossies, I mean, Death Shadow loves Dossies. But with the original artwork, which is a lot better, Aether Vial, this card has snuck up a ton in price and reprinting it as a rare again. Good decision. I love the card and it's something that I actually don't own any of given I played Death and Taxes, but I couldn't afford the Aether Vials. 
I, well, it's not that I couldn't afford it. I just didn't want to pay that much money for a uncommon. Now that the price is a little bit more reasonable, I'm going to go ahead and pick up my playset and then plug it in in my Def and Taxes deck. I, no, actually, that's not wrong. I have two of them. So I don't play a playset because I don't own a playset. I only own two of them. So Aether Vial, one of the strongest cards in that type of deck. Very glad to see a reprint. $35 seems kind of reasonable to me. All of these cards will fall down in price as more supply enters the market. But they are eternal. Meaning that these are very good cards. I, again, would I rather have this or a Scarab God? A Scarab God being at $42 and Aether Vial being $35. I take Aether Vial all the time because I'm worried that the Scarab God is not going to be at $42 very long. Ancestral Visions, would I rather have this or a Scarab God? This. There's no doubt in my mind I would much rather have this card. So when you look at the eight cards that we're going to see today, they will hold value. Yes, they may dip a little bit. They will recover that value and perhaps be even more expensive than the initial pre-order price. They did a fantastic job. I mean, they probably just... If I had to guess what they did, well, they went to TCG Player, listed all the possible cards that could be reprinted by price, and then picked all the expensive ones. And they called it Iconic Masters, which should be very interesting to see what 25th Anniversary Masters looks like. I imagine it would have to have something like uh, Portal Free Kingdoms to keep its value high. And it has to be better than Iconic Masters. So my argument here is you cannot flood the market of Iconic Masters and then hit players with 25th Anniversary if 25th Anniversary is no good. Because then no one would buy it. They would just buy Iconic Masters again. All right. Here is a $60 rare. Man, it is just... These are eight reasons you should buy this stuff. And I know it's $10 a pack. I don't want to encourage Wizards of the Coast to like make a $20 pack or a $50 pack. But I, I see in the future that's going to happen. Because this will be very successful. They literally picked all the expensive cards and reprinted them in the set. With the ideal art artwork. So this is my favorite artwork on Flusterstorm. It's the only one I remember. Maybe the... Judge Promo has a different one, but I've never seen a Judge Promo before in person. Original Commander artwork is where it is at. So I'm very glad to see all the Commander cards be reprinted. Like the Kalia deck was reprinted. Kalia came in foil now, and that was amazing. Flusterstorm was reprinted. Chaos Warp was, I'm pretty sure, reprinted. Oh, and another $65 card, Horizon Canopy. There's so much value in the rares. Yeah, there's a Chase Mythic at the top end, but I'd much rather have a set where the value is more spread evenly. I mean, it's high. If you open up Booster Box and you don't get one of these eight cards, mm, very bad luck. It is also possible you get one of these eight cards in foil. Huh. Now, the multiplier in foil for master sets are not as high as it is for, let's say, the original printing. But nonetheless, it will be a highly, highly liquid card and buy listable for a lot of money. Dot Seas in foil has just skyrocketed it into oblivion. I think the last time I saw it, it was a four or $500 card. I'm very glad that now we have the same artwork and it can also be in foil. And that should reduce... I mean... In my personal opinion, yes, I know some people like the originals, but if the original is 400 and then the regular one is like 50 and they have the same artwork, I'm going to buy the modern master, the master series one because it is significantly cheaper and there's no, if anything, I assume that this is better quality. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.